can I survive state of decay to lethal zone if all the zombies are bloaters? Oh shit, no! We'll be jumping into a fresh game with three fresh characters. Please meet Jesus, Michaela and Broadway. They'll be setting up base in the beautiful Cascade Hills and things get off to a great start when they find a toolkit in the starter car. Possibly the best loot you can get at the start of Lethal Zone. If I can find some fuel to pair it with, that would be even better. But for now, let's just settle with claiming the starter base. They're gonna be- Oh shit in hell. Jesus, well, we almost had our first jump scare there. Also, just want to apologise about the awful face cam audio. I've had a few problems with OBS, so there probably won't be a lot of live reaction. So if you see this ugly mug in the top right hand corner, corner of your screen, something bad is probably about to happen. But not on this occasion, I actually find a can of gas. So I can now get the starter car up and running, and start searching the public toilets nearby. Definitely gonna need to be careful about entering dark enclosed spaces on this one. I find meds, chems and a second toolkit. God damn this spawn is blessed. Nope, nope, get away, get away, get away! It pops, surprisingly not infecting my colleagues. Gotta take the wins where you can I suppose. And with the starter car mostly filled, repaired and fueled, we make our way to the starter base, making sure to avoid any explosive speed bumps en route. There's a bloater right next to my parking space, which I successfully managed to edge. And here comes the interesting bit, claiming the base while everything inside is a bloater. Instead of bursting through the front door like some kind of buffoon, I play it tactically and run around the side. Ignore him, no idea why he's not a poppy boy. And you can probably hear we also have a screamer in the base, as well as bloaters exploding. In fact, there's at least three that popped off. And can someone take out that pissing screamer? I end up waiting out the clouds in the kitchen. I just wish my mates had that kind of foresight. And with that taken care of, I can claim the base. That definitely could have gone better, but but at the same time could have gone worse. We really need to get an infirmary on the go so we can sort out that infection meter. But before we get to looting, I've got the trader boom turned on so I've got a shit ton of influence. And a stranger to give it all to. I take literally everything of any value. Hopefully she won't starve to death. And after that, Jesus takes the car up to the unfinished houses nearby. Which goes well. Oh god, oh Jesus, yeah. That's some serious damage to take before we even get the infirmary up. Thankfully, bloaters are slow so I don't really need to worry about being quiet. Although there's a lot of standing around waiting for clouds to dissipate. And weirdly, that gives them time to catch up. I find two sacks of building materials in the unfinished house, and a third in this garage nearby. Although no idea why I'm parking like that. If a bloater comes anywhere near my bonnet, I got bigger things to worry about. Anyway, with the sacks successfully collected, we can make our way back to base. And you'd think I'd be a bit more careful about driving off road in a bloater only challenge. I guess you could say I like to live on the edge. Which is exactly why after I start work on the infirmary, I call it in for an Independence Day weapon delivery. Who doesn't like fireworks when all of your enemies are explosive? I collect the supply drop drop then call in a trader to keep the ammo topped up. And would you look at that, excellent timing my friend. I purchase as much as the rest of my influence will allow me, pay an extra attention to the throwable explosives. Now with us locked and loaded, and a significantly dented car, we make our way to assault our first play card. Surprisingly without hitting any wandering speed bumps. Admittedly we have the same issue we had with the Juggernaut and Feral mod, and that's that we do get some plague zombies spawn around play cards. But maybe that makes things more interesting, let me know in the comment section. Although I quite literally beat myself into a corner, and with it phasing I decided it would be best to set everything on fire. I'm sure you'll agree a real questionable decision on my part. Thankfully Jesus can stop, drop and roll like the best of them. And to think I thought he was just an average carpenter. With everything burnt to a crisp around me the second phase comes very quickly. Which is handy because I also haven't got the stamina to last particularly long. And with the game now only spawning bloaters they don't catch up to me before I can take down the final phase. Plenty of time for looting too. And given my current overall health I figure it's probably time to head back to base and give someone else a go. I swap to Michaela who isn't looking too sharp herself. And the first thing she's got to sort out is a dirty stinking thief. And after a quick chat to Broadway we find out exactly where the thief ran off to. And it's like listen bitch if you're gonna steal food from me you've got to at least run further than 100 meters from my home. Ah how ironic you've chosen to die in a health center. And that's weird she's even locked the door behind her. Oh shit fuck fuck. Did that bastard thief set a trap for me? Well it's a good thing I come packing with my trusty firework launcher. Fire can instantly clear the clouds. But interestingly he's also stood inches away from certain death. So I decide to help the bloke out a bit. You are very welcome, thieving scum. With the clouds gone, I corner him in the room. I only took a little food. I'm starving. I'll take what you stole off your corpse. He becomes hostile immediately, so I set him on fire for the second time. At least the food he stole is going to be cooked ready for me. But when I try to put some distance between the two of us, I unfortunately get caught. Well, I'm definitely not making out the front door. Let's try that. Okay, yep. Yeah, no, wait, wait. Hang on. Why can't I open the door? Wait, no. I'm trapped. No. I bash that A button harder than I was as a child, but sadly I'm more stuck than your stepsister in the washing machine. Look, I'm screwed. I am screwed. 
Mc oh, for Christ's sake. R.I.P. Michaela, at least your corpse is fully intact. Although, to be honest, I think I'd prefer the Juggernaut. Taking over as Broadway, who has to be said, is in much better condition. In hindsight, I probably should have taken over as her. Broadway gets back to the medical center, but there's no sign of the thief anyway. I guess that bastard lives to eat another day. But the one thing I do find is Michaela's rotten corpse. Which is handy as she was carrying 70% of the fireworks I just spent all of my influence on. While I'm here, I turn the medical center into an outpost. And from here on out, this place shall be known as Michaela's Memorial. Rest in peace, Queen. You were cracking. Hang on. She died in like less than five minutes. The woman was about as much use as a nun's cut. Moving swiftly on, Broadway loots the rest of the area. And you know what? It's nice not to have to worry about putting outpost defences down. Onwards and upwards, livestream chat gave me permission to call in a red talon. And if you'd like to check out any of my live streams, I go live with State of Decay every Sunday from 6pm UK time. I've just started playing the No Man's Land mod. The full video will be out next week if you're interested. Anyway, I arrive at the rendezvous, taking enough fences out to make a carpenter a shudder. And after headbutting my way through a pane glass window, I welcome Kravitz to the team. He's a gut-packing, average-shooting, slightly heroic, tactical genius who needs to work on his cardio. I'm sure he'll fit right in. I drop him off, then Broadway makes her way to a survey point. What can I say? Any excuse to climb a really tall ladder. We do a little scout about and find a suspicious amount of bloaters. I know what you're thinking, bloaters in a bloater-only mod, shocking. Anyway, let's crack on with our second player card. And rather surprisingly, no bloaters have spawned in the vicinity, which would have made things a lot easier. But I do manage to drop a lovely little fire work known as the Reign of Fire, which I'm sure you'll agree makes everything look proper pretty. Gotta love the smell of burning pulsating meat. I go back inside with it with my heavy weapon, that is until the crowds start catching up with me. At that point it's time to go to Boomtown. Fire in the hole! Which goes well. Okay, yeah, oh that was a big hit, what the fuck? Apparently Broadway can't take massive blows from behind, what a pussy. But even with half an atom of health, I'm still determined to leave this area with a sack thoroughly beaten. Which I achieve with the heavy weapon. Go on, Broadway. Although it turns out there are some negatives to having fuck all health. Could someone tell the Tory government, please? Luckily, Broadway still has some blood pumping through them veins. I'm also very grateful to find a medikit in the play card. But it was probably a waste of me using it, especially as I head straight back to base. Then I take over as the newbie Kravitz, who has a mission to go find some luxury items in a farm. But I ain't gonna do that shit. Instead, I head out to try and find some chemicals to upgrade my infirmary to level 2. Starting with this little garage. From the mini-map, I can see there's at least one bloater inside. So I play it smart, firing a firework through the window. Burn, baby, burn. But that was about as effective as using cling film as a condom. So for my second attempt, I burn them with the door open. Much success. I find building materials and scraps of circuitry, but no chemicals. But the one place you can always find plenty is this abandoned train, which is also a lot closer and more convenient to base. So that's probably a tactical misplay on my behalf. So I take the stuff back to base and start the upgrade. I can then crack on to try and attack more play cards. And seeing as this mod doesn't seem to have a lot of zombie spawns, either that or bloaters are too easy to avoid, someone in stream chat suggested installing a zombie spawner mod to increase, well, the zombie spawns. But to be honest, it didn't seem to help the bloater spawns whatsoever. If anything, it just increased the amount of plague zombies. But since recording this video, I've actually tested the spawner mod properly in a drinking stream, and I think it must have been clashing with the bloater mod or something, because this is absolutely nothing in comparison to that madness. If you want to check out that stream, I'll leave a link in the description for you. But anyway, I thought I'd add a bit of extra context as to why there were more plague zombies while I take down this heart. I turned it off immediately after taking down this heart, but I just thought you should know. I complete the first phase, then drop a rain of fire, which I'm sure you'll agree goes very, very well. Who doesn't love a singed eyebrow? And with the crowds nice and crispy, I run back in and complete the second phase with my heavy weapon. On my escape, I obviously set everybody and myself on fire and also managed to toss a frag grenade at the plague heart. And remember what I said earlier? Kravitz really needs to work on his cardio. Thank fuck we have a lot of highly caffeinated beverages to keep us going. The bloaters finally start to arrive, but I've also got to fight off a shit ton of plague zeds before I can go back in to fight the heart. Thankfully, I'm packing some serious heat. Pun most definitely intended. But once they're down, I can finally go in and finish off the play cart. Although I unfortunately get bit while searching the play cart. I'm sure you'll agree, not an ideal situation to be in. Especially as I'm yet to craft any plague cures. Ah, fuck it, it's fine. I'll do a quick bit of searching, then we'll head back and stick him in the infirmary. Or will I? I leave the bathroom without checking my mini-map, only to get my lungs filled with gooey shit. And now I'm four and a half minutes from death. So I ignite the cloud with a firework launcher, and clutching my stomach, I make a break for my car. Burning everything alive that follows me. I get in the car with two bloaters approaching, so go through the fence. And now I just need to make a 1200 meter drive back to base in under four minutes. Whilst also avoiding all of the sleeping speed bumps. Oh shit! No! No!
I said I wasn't going to upload that. That's also very bad timing. The worst thing is the fucker wasn't even sleeping. He was stood in the middle of the bastard street. I now have less than two minutes to live with a thousand meters from base and a car that's full of stinking shit. I'm sure you'll agree I've certainly been in better situations. Finally, the cloud disappears and I get back in the car. Obviously through the back door and shimmy in onto the front seat to get into the driving position. What can I say? I'm all about that efficiency. One minute 30 remaining. I speed through Morgan's Landing onto the bridge and over the river. Still 800 meters from safety. Hold on, Kravitz, but you're gonna be just fine. At this stage of the infection, the pain must be insufferable. I imagine his lungs are filling with blood and his mental state must be fading in and out. Less than a minute remaining. I fly into our driveway, still making sure to park sensibly. This is the remains of a society, after all. I might be home, but my inventory is full. I need to make room for the cure I'm about to craft. 30 seconds remaining. With a slot now empty, I tumble through the garden gate and into the infirmary. Come on, fat thumbs, don't fail me now. With the cure crafted, I jab it into my neck, still with over 20 seconds remaining. Looks like Kravitz lives to fight another day, but barely. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Make sure to tune in next weekend when we take on the No Man's Land mod, where all the play cards are black cards.